This is the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II. And in this episode, I'm gonna share with you the five components that I call my street photography settings. So let's not waste any time and get started with the basics. So the basics for me contain of four to five different elements. First thing I do when I go out there on the streets is put my shutter speed automatic mode for the very simple reason is that I don't want to continuously twist and turn all those buttons and I get access to the exposure compensation button. So that's really nice for me. It saves me a lot of hassle. Secondly, I shoot mostly during the day. So my ISO is normally set at 400, but I have the flexibility to manually change it back to 100. That's what I need in, let's say, bright daylight conditions. In low light, obviously, I'm going to bunk it up to 800 with a limit to 6400. But normally, I like to keep control over my ISO manually. Then let's go to the aperture. Yes, if you're doing street photography, it's f8 to f11, right? Not for me. I started with f2 or the maximum apertures a few years ago. And slowly but surely over the years, I shoot between f4 and f8 with a sweet spot for 5.6, as it's my opinion that in with most lenses and cameras, that is actually the point where your pictures are reaching perfect sharpness. Let me know in the comments below what you think about that the f8 to f11 i can understand when you use it if you're shooting manual mode and zone focusing so if you're shooting zone focusing you know one and a half to two meters i can understand that you shoot at f11 f8 because anywhere lower than an aperture so wider open you're probably going to miss a few subjects and are going to be out of focus another basic is shooting jpeg or raw or both and jpeg in fuji terms is the fine and for me i shoot both very simply put because the jpeg itself so fine a finished good whereas raw is an unfinished good so i shoot raw uncompressed that gives me the most real estate to actually in post start editing the way that i like so once that's basically set you're thinking you're done no no i'm not and if you're curious to what i do for photography go to www.paultakesphotos.com Yes, it is. And if you want to help me out in creating better content, please go into my community tab and participate in the polls where I ask the questions, what you want to see or not. And the more of you participate, the better I can cater for you. Let's go into the focus and drive modes. Yeah, so my drive mode is about 95% of the time it's in single. Yeah, so I use single shoot one picture at a time. However, over the last couple of months, I've discovered there's a place for CL and CH, which stands for continuous high and continuous low. These are continuous shooting modes. And that definitely has a place when you're in busier, more dynamic environments, that having that little five or eight frames per second shooting can really make a difference. You know, so that's the two modes I predominantly use. Yeah, with most of the time, single point, single point single point focus for a very specific reason that I think that renders the best results for the type of photographer I am. I don't like the continuous autofocus on Fuji cameras in general because I'm also used to Sony and to be very honest that's a completely different ball game. You use continuous and yeah, let me know in the comments below whether you prefer single or continuous because I really prefer single on Fuji cameras. Now obviously there's also a part where we have manual focus and I use the Yashica lens here, the 50mm f1.7 with the wide to see adapter on it. Great value for money, you can see a video here where I explain it. But the point here is if you shoot manual, you, know, you first have to calibrate your camera to tell it what kind of focal length you basically use. It's kind of important. Um, once you do that you put in your peaking and yeah, manual focus lenses, I kind of like them. They're a bit quirky but they give me that old fashioned feeling from the 90s. So I really like it. Tell me what you think of manual focus lenses on these type of cameras. Then once I have my basics, my focus settings, drive modes, all of that configured into one, it's time to choose my film sims and film recipes i had to think there a bit for my film sims i've analyzed my fuji photos over the last I think four years and i came to the conclusion that classic chrome is definitely my favorite uh, kind of profile followed by the black and white applied with a red or a green filter black and white you know is very specific scenarios for me i either use it in extreme low light because i like that little you know the the the, the whites popping out uh, and also during bright daylight, if you have really bright daylight, it's really difficult in colors sometimes to get the right 
the right look on an image. Well, with black and white, it changes it completely because it, because it becomes about shadows and highlights. Let me know what you think in a bright daylight, you know, let's say between one and three in the afternoon. Are you going for black and white or are you going for color or for both? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, the third one I basically have there is Eterna and that's only since I have the Fujifilm X-T30 I basically shoot with that profile. Let me share you my three film recipes. It's the Agfa Optima 200 which has the base there is the film sim Vivid. Kodak Chrome 1 version 2. Guess what the actual film simulation is there, the bases. And I'll tell you something why I like these three profiles. Or recipes for the very simple fact is that in my work nowadays I see a uh, fascination for yellow and orange for some reason don't ask me why it's just in there so whenever I'm on, on the street I'd like to have those pop out so that's why those vivid kind of base comes from in my film simulations there is a point of caution when you're into film simulations what I've actually discovered is that they're not always that consistent as you've probably noticed and them not being consistent is to, due to two settings and you really need to look out for those is first of all clarity put your clarity down to zero maybe plus one but not more otherwise your highlights and shadows get very messy and crushed the second point of caution is your dynamic range I normally put it into a hundred or two hundred but seldomly on four hundred because once your clarity is on and your dynamic range on four hundred so you both have them above plus one and 400 what I've noticed is that shy lights and shy lights shy lights my highlights and shadows shy lights my highlights and shadows are basically being blown out and the entire photo is basically ruined so let me know in the comments below if you have a similar thing there I really found that fascinating and that's a general thing with recipes they're not perfect so modify them to your own tastes yeah? but keep the bases there now we go to another one white balance question to you what setting for white balance do you use? Is it A, gray card, B, auto? And the second point is, do you use Kelvin? That basically is a color temperature you can apply. Yeah, so it ranges from 2500 all the way up to 10,000 and basically 2500 is extremely blue and 10,000 is extremely orange and everything in, in between. Of late, over the last year, I've been using Kelvin more and more because it gives me more control over the white balance and you can still modify the Kelvins with a minus of plus Bs and greens and all this kind of stuff, but I just keep it there. I normally shoot on 5500 to 5700 on normal days and in the summer I sometimes go a bit crazy and go on 7500 because I like that real summery look. Yeah. Have you ever used Kelvin? Let me know in the comments below whether you prefer white balance without the green card or you prefer to green card it or you want to have the Kelvin value fixed. Now, last but not least, a setting I really, really like, uh, often overlooked in street photography, which is the photometry setting or the metering mode. Now, Fuji has four of those, which are multi-metering. So this basically exposes for your entire frame. We have center weight, which says it, it puts the weight of the metering in the center. We have spot metering, which really is to put it on a specific spot you focus on to really expose it over there. This is great when it comes to backlit items. Yeah, so if you have somebody with a big light in, in the back and you take the picture and you're often thinking, well, oh, I have to go into post to kind of add up everything. If you use spot, it looks a lot better. And then there's average metering, which basically takes the entire frame and puts an average cast over it. Now you've seen these few things here floating by my little examples. But I think here what is really important to note is that it has a fundamental impact on your photography. And I really feel that many of the tutorials here I see here in YouTube really don't go much into it. Yeah, spot is great, what I said, for backlit, but it's also great, for instance, if you want to take a little macro shot on the street, I don't know. You can really pinpoint your focus and the exposure is accordingly adjusted if you shoot in that metering mode. Yeah, center weight, I think, is pretty much like spot but the area is bigger yeah and then there's multimetering which is pretty much the one where basically everybody goes into but you can use those for specific scenarios as I do yeah so these are my settings let me know what you think in the comments below